Hi and welcome to this tutorial. Here I'm going to show you how to use the declining balance method in order to calculate depreciation within Microsoft Excel. Now if you'd like to get this workbook go to teachexcel.com, search for the video tutorial and you can download the workbook there. So what I've got right here is the syntax for the declining balance method function and you can reference that at any time and we're going to go over that here to calculate the depreciation for an asset for the five years of its useful life or its entire useful life which is five years. Now here I have the initial cost of the asset, how much I paid for it. This is the salvage value of the asset, how much I think I can sell it for after its useful life. And here's the useful life, five years. So let's go ahead and calculate the depreciation using declining balance method for year one. Equals DB open parentheses. Now the first argument we need is the cost, which I've got right here, cost. So how much we paid for it. This cell right here. Now I'm going to hit F4 so I can copy this formula down. All that does is it makes this cell reference absolute, so it's not going to change no matter what. Comma. The next thing I need is the salvage value. Salvage value, how much I can sell the asset for at the end of its useful life, right here. Once again, I'm going to make that absolute by hitting the F4 on my keyboard. Comma. The next argument I need is its life. Really just its uh, useful lifetime is what it's going to be. Which is, in this case, five years. So after five years, I'm expected to sell this asset. Or I'm going to sell it. Hit F4 to make an absolute sell reference. Comma. Now we need to know what period we're in. By default, this function is going to assign periods as years, right? So since um, you do depreciation by year usually, I've got five years or five periods. Year one is going to be period one. This is because by default, like I just said, by default, each period is 12 months. So period is going to be one. Now this does assume that I'm going to be able to depreciate the asset in year one for the entire 12 months of year one. So basically, I purchased it on day one of, uh, of uh, my business here. So that's pretty much what it means. I'll get into that in a second, a little bit more detail. So period one, because it's year one, close parentheses, hit enter. So now we see year one depreciation, 225 grand and $500. Now, since I made all of these absolute cell references, I can simply copy this down by double clicking in the bottom right hand corner. And I made one too many references. Uh, or no, here. I have it set for one. So the one copied down for each time, right? So if I go down here, it still set, thinks it's period one. Now, there's a little trick that I use for that. You could hard code it in to. Uh, do that, but instead of just typing in one, two, three, four, five for each period, I'm going to use the row function. Now the row function is going to count what row you're in. So it doesn't matter what's in the cell you click, but I'm going to click this because it's in row one. So cell C1, close the parentheses, now um, hit enter. When I copy it down, it'll adjust for the periods. So if that's confusing you, just don't type this formula in here and hard code the numbers. So I would hard code two in hard code 3 in for year 3 and so on. So here I've hard coded them in for you. Anyway, so that's how the declining balance method works. And this is assuming that I purchased the asset on day 1 of year 1 and it went into production or use on uh, day 1 of year 1 and stopped at the end of year 5. Now another thing that this function allows you to do is to account for if you purchased it five months into year one or six months into year one. So let's go ahead and figure out how to do that right now. So let's go ahead and say that um, <clears throat> for our asset we purchased it uh, with only four months left in the year. So how we would run that is like this. Go ahead and actually add an extra year, and you'll see why in a second. And let's start the formula again. Equals DB, open parentheses. It cost us this much. Make it absolute, comma, salvage value of that, 
make the cell reference absolute by hitting F4, comma, the life is five years, comma, actually make the absolute, comma, the period. This time I'm just going to go ahead and make it a cell reference over here so that we can uh, put numbers in here. You'll see how to do it that way. Comma, now month. Month is the optional argument. And this accounts for when you buy an asset or the asset um, begins to be used in the middle of a year or some, por some time in the year other than day one. So we got this uh, asset eight months in. We only have four months left in the year. So we're only going to calculate depreciation for four months. So type a four here. Now the four is going to remain in the formula unchanged for all of the years or periods. So let's close the parentheses, hit enter. Now I'm going to make sure I type numbers in here. It'll just be easier to see it that way. Okay, so you can see with four months, depreciation in year one is um, quite a bit different. So let's go ahead and copy this down and see how it works out. And copy this one down. So there we go. So that's how we can do depreciation um, if it's not for the first full year. And then year six, this is going to account for eight months into the sixth year. So it's not actually for all of year six. So that's how you do the declining balance method of depreciation in Excel. Now there's one thing to be careful of, and this is what it's not going to work for. So hopefully you're still listening. If your salvage value is zero, watch what happens. No, it does not work. So year one, the entire value gets depreciated because the formula gets messed up. This one works for two years, then it breaks after that. Now the reason that happens is because of the way that the depreciation rate is calculated. So putting a zero in here messes up the formula for the way the rate's calculated and subsequently messes everything else up. So you need to have a salvage value that is positive. Zero is just not going to work. So that's it for this tutorial, and if you'd like to get this workbook, go to teachexcel.com, search for the uh, this video tutorial, and you can download the workbook there.